I think that it looks so much nicer now. It was just white background in the area. Yeah. See, that looks good. Yeah. We are now officially, though they've been sitting here and waiting for you all to arrive, we are now officially starting our 2023-2024 Theater Awards. <laughs> so the intention of tonight is to reflect upon the year together and to celebrate our many successes and highlights and what each individual brings to the theater community. Seven years ago, we started this tradition and it's continued to evolve, but we have certain pillars that we always revisit every year. Um, and the first thing that we usually start with is we have our officers, our theater officers do an officer report. So the first person I will welcome up here is Leah Jameson. Hey guys. <laughs> I'm here to give a speech on what theater council is. If the speech sounds familiar, you definitely didn't hear it awards last year. Uh, theater council is an important and fun part of the theater community. Theater council creates a place for the students to come together to solve any issues in the community and to organize events. 
It allows for students to fill the roles of leadership and ensuring that all voices are heard and we can address the needs of our theater company. Our elected officers are always available to listen to people's wants and concerns and advocate for them to a group of people who can make change. Theater Council works to keep the BFA theater community a safe and organized place so that we can all enjoy doing the things we love like musicals, one acts, junior jam, and improv. Theater Council is filled with helpful and welcoming people that help guide the, gu guide the theater community. And next, I'll be introducing M. Gibson to give us a report on the musical. So this year, the musical is Mamma Mia, a story about a mother and daughter and their complicated relationship, navigating the world through early adulthood, old friendships rekindled, lovers quarrel, and of course, Sophie's three dads. <laughs> When thinking about how I could describe this musical, the only word that really fit was fun. From sparkly outfits, feather boas, and dancing on beds, to the pit band that came alive and brought the show together, this was such a fun show. Of course, it didn't come without its challenges. A show this dance and song heavy was not an easy feat, but ultimately it all came together. We grew as a community and as individuals. We learned about perseverance, communication, commitment, responsibility, and we learned about each other. Um, and now, Gray Bruley will be talking about the One Act. So, my name is Gray Bruley, and tonight I have the pleasure of talking about our One Act show this year, Little Woman. A good friend of mine, M. Gibson, requested to our director, Susan, that we do Little Woman for our One Act show. And to everyone's delight, she said yes, with the understanding that this show would be very challenging, especially in terms of characters. Little Woman is a heartwarming story of the March sisters and their family and friends growing up together and navigating through their world. I was fortunate enough to play Jo, but I was even more fortunate to play her alongside some of my very close friends as my sisters, family, and neighbors. Our cast became very close throughout rehearsals, which were nearly every day after school. We explored our characters and dynamics together. I could not have asked for a better cast for such a well-known and lovely show. Everyone was so supportive of one another and built an incredible community for us to share. After our performance for the community in March, we hosted the Regional One Act Festival, where we were one of the two schools which moved on to the state competition hosted at Otter Valley. We were able to perform alongside incredibly talented shows and made history for BFA as for the first time in at least 30 years, we moved on to the New England Festival with schools from all over New England. We made so many connections through this show with one another, other schools, and our characters. We received the honor of being recognized by the state for the hard work, dedication, and heart that our actors, technicians, teachers, and parents poured into this show. BFA's Little Woman was truly an amazing accomplishment that our theater community is beyond proud to have. We will all remember this experience proudly and cherish our friendships, bonds, hard work, and legacy that we have created. Thank you to everyone who made this show possible. And next, I have Mackenzie Smith talking about Junior Jam. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. This year, Junior Jam was something new entirely. While still being a competition against grades, this year we combined sophomores and seniors and freshmen with the juniors. Students also had less time to put something together after the immense success of the One Act. Junior Jam is a fun competition that brings new members into the theater community and allows for a more relaxed environment with lots of laughs. This year, the juniors and freshmen put on a show called Container of Sharks, which is a parody of Shark Tank, and the seniors and sophomores performed a show called 13 Ways to Fail Your College Interview, which is highly relevant right now. Um, the seniors took the crown and our hearts. Um, next up, Jess is going to be talking about the tech program. right now, Wednesdays after school, and is everything from lighting, sound, mics, costumes, props, backstage help, and more. Theater is wonderful with just actors, but it wouldn't have as much magic as it does without tech. Um, yeah, this year we went to states, so we got to experience different technical setups and regionals where Lily took on uh, lighting for the first time in a new school. <laughs> I 
I'd like to introduce Aries, who will talk about improv team. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight, and I'm here to acknowledge our improv team. This year, we had an incredible new opportunity that we did not have in the past, extending our performances into two live shows, as well as opportunities to perform for Vermont public access. We moved in as we had not before. Improv team, while being a very good place to hone skills and adaptability, both on life and in stage, it is a comfortable place for you to discover your own talents. The ability to find your own comedic style on stage and find your style and strengths. Improv team is something that I joined at first so I could work on my skills as an actor, but the more I did it, I realized how much fun I had, finding out I'm more capable of comedy than I actually imagined before. I thank improv team for the new skills that I've gained because of it, and the things that has taught me and will continue to teach me. And finally, I would like to introduce Nat Cronin to the stage to talk about our fall musical. So, our fall musical is Beauty and the Beast, which most of you know the story of Beauty and the Beast. Um, so this year, we are allowing 7th and 8th graders to be on our show, as well as, as upperclassmen. Um, so this year, instead of having our choreographer that we've had in the past, Colleen, we have four student choreographers, uh, Leah Jameson, M. Gibson, Ray Bruley, and Chloe Hargis. <laughs> um, so the auditions are actually tomorrow, and we've had two workshops before it, and it looks really promising. I'm very excited for the show. That's it. Great, so thank you all. Um, one of our lovely traditions, so the people who just spoke to you now were our theater officers. This is something that started about six years ago, so my first year here. Uh, I introduced this idea of a student leadership group. We had that at my high school when I did theater, and um, I really enjoyed that. And so um, through the years, the officers actually have decided what roles they thought should exist. And a couple years ago, some of the officers wrote up descriptions about like what each role would be. And um, every year we vote on new officers. And we, the first year, sort of spontaneously created this um, thing that is stuck of knighting in the new officers. So the former officer um, will take the sword and knight in the new officer. It gets really fun when the officer who's coming in is replacing themselves, but all the more fun to witness. So I will pass this off to Mackenzie, who was our treasurer this year, and will be knighting in our new treasurer, Emma Gibson. And Mackenzie, you can pass it off to Gray, who was our social media manager, and we'll be knighting in our new social media manager, Gray. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be passing off to Aries, who was our secretary. And we'll be knighting in our new secretary, Aries. <laughs> <laughs> you can pass it off to Nat, who was our vice president, and we'll be knighting in our new vice president, Chloe Weinstein. I feel like we need to add music. I think this needs to come next. Some sort of like music. So, you. And uh, now we'll pass it off to Emma Gibson, who was. The, oh wait, the, the next, who was the president and is knighting in our new president, Leah Jameson. <laughs> who will pass it off to Jess, who was our tech representative, who will be knighting in our new tech representative, Shannon Milne. <laughs> Uh, 
so next, I will ask all of our, um, our officers to exit the stage. And we have a senior performance. So Penelope Noza, who was our stage manager for many a year, um, and I never really have gotten to hear sing, and I'm so excited, has stepped up to sing, and Chris LaDuke will be accompanying, and perhaps Penelope will tell you about the number which she's singing. So, hi, I'm Penelope. Okay, you already said that, but hi again. <laughs> So tonight I'll be performing. Thank you. Yep, almost there. We practice this, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and yeah, from Francis and the Frog, if you guys haven't heard it before. Apologies in advance, I think I have a tickle in my throat, but that's okay. <laughs> All set. <clears throat> Mamba, I ain't got time for dancing. That's just gonna have to wait a while. Ain't got time for messing around And it's not my style This old town can slow you down People taking the easy way But I know exactly where I'm going Getting closer, closer every day And I'm freshman year and I loved it. I thought it was so cool that I got to be in a show with the big kids. I thought it was so funny that Susan wanted us barefoot and I was beyond excited when I was given a monologue. I knew then that theater was going to be a place for me. Freshman year came along and I told everyone who would listen about how much I loved convocation, how cool the upperclassmen were and how big the stage was. I was in the car with my mom when I found out I got the mysterious man in Into the Woods we held hands and we screamed very loud. 
I learned a lot from that year. I learned about theater and stage presence, projection and blocking, memorizing and stage makeup, but I also learned about myself. I learned that this room, this place, is, was a place that I could always be myself. My sophomore year was a personal challenge, and honestly, I have a hard time remembering most of it, except the only memories that are crystal clear are the ones I made during the Adams Family. My relationship with the cast had grown over the summer, so this was my last show with some of my best friends before they were going to go off to, and do bigger and better things. I think I will cherish that show forever. Junior year taught me that consistency is not promised. The people who I had thought of as BFA theater had gone off to college and it was our turn to be the big kids. I, it, it didn't feel like I imagined. I didn't feel old enough, but something I won't ever take for granted is the friendships I've made this year. You are all so special, so important, and so talented, and I hope we're doing a decent job of being your big kids. When I think of theater, I think of it as a place, not necessarily this room, this stage, these curtains or chairs. It's not a tangible place. It's the place that goes with you wherever you go, wherever you are, who are whoever you are with, and even if you can't touch it with your hands, you carry it in your heart. To the seniors that are leaving us for bigger and better things, if you found theater, theater to be your place, know that it won't leave you, but it will follow. And if at some point you feel like you've lost it, maybe you can't find it in your heart anymore, know that it will return, because you've had it once before. Theater is my place, and I'm beyond grateful that I get to share this place with all of you. Thank you. to welcome Gray Bruley to come help me with some um, thank yous to the teachers. So um, at, for the people that are here, as I call your name, I'd love it if we would love it if you could come up to the stage and accept a flower. Um, so for Susan, our director and our mentor, from stage directions to helping everything run smoothly, things couldn't have gone well without you, and we thank you for all that you do. Mr. Bell, the tech master that he is, is such an amazing person to be around. He helps everything in tech run smoothly and he makes sure that all the actors have their daily dose of um, humor. <laughs> Thank you so much for all that you do. So Mr. Rusumi is not here. Um, but he is truly one of a kind, from yelling kind things at us to walking around barefoot everywhere. Um, he does so much, and the show could not run smoothly without him, and we thank him for everything that he does. Um, Colleen McHugh, I don't believe she's here, but um, from teaching us ponies to pirouettes, the show couldn't have gone on without you, and, thank, and we thank her for all that she does. And then Chris, our fabulous pianist, <laughs> he makes sure that everything is running smoothly, he, he makes sure that we know our music and that he knows our music, um, he is constantly a person we can go to to talk to and have a laugh, so thank you Chris for all that you do. up to the stage to do some parent thank yous. Even at the latest of hours when they've already had dinner and then we get home late and, and we want dinner. And this is specifically to my parents because they always have to do that, so thank you guys so much for being here. <laughs> um, we need your support. Some of our parents went above and beyond as they traveled on buses, ran box office, and built props and costumes. Please come to the stage when your name is called and accept a beautiful flower from us. Okay. 
She is the beautiful flower. Okay, so first we would like to invite to the stage Diane Brulee. So I would say come up over here, and then uh, when you exit, you can exit off that way, just so because we'll probably keep people moving. When you come up to get your award, make sure that you also we have these for everybody. So I will give these to Mr. Bell so he can hand them out. There, um, it says Bell is Free Academy Theater Company 2023-2024. So um, make sure you get one of those. All right. So for Best Supporting Role in a Musical, Lily Duffy. <laughs> Best Lead in a One-Act Play, Gray Bruley. <laughs> Best Lead in a Musical, Emma Gibson. I don't think this person is here, but most on track and under attack is Ben Hossinger. <laughs> you 
Next year, we'll make sure these people get their awards. Best Dancer in a Musical, Leah Jameson. Best Featured Role in a Musical, Chloe Hargis. Best Student Pit in the Musical, Finn Matting. member in a musical, Nat Cronin. <laughs> Best comedic relief in a musical, Chloe Weinstein. <laughs> Best supporting role in a musical, Aries Young. <laughs> Best backstage hype man, I don't think he's here, Max Weston. Uh, and I don't know if this person here, most charismatic ensemble member in a musical, Olivia Newhall. I don't know that this person's here either. Most versatile singer, John Collum. Hello. Best dancing for an ensemble member in a musical, Olivia Connor. Best Lighting Technician and Designer, Jessica Southwick. <laughs> Most punctual cast member, but I don't think here, Owen Scott. <laughs> I don't know that this person's here either. Hardest worker, Griffin Do So. <laughs> best feeder, bestie, Hardy Tooth. You probably bet these people. I don't think that's such a reward ceremony. I don't think so. Um, the Perfect Attendance Award, and this person is here, because that would just be too ironic. <laughs> Brendan Conley. <laughs> Most energetic ensemble member, Alden Heskett. Best projection on stage, Aurora Gilman. Best sound technician, designer, Sophia Williams. I don't know that this person is here either. Uh, most prepared ensemble member, Lily Perrin. <laughs> Best multitasker, Mackenzie Smith. <laughs> I don't think this person's here either. Most charismatic ensemble member in a musical, Nathan Blaze. Don't think this person's here. Best attention to detail in a musical, Maya Jenkins. <laughs> Most likely to burst into dance, August Hillis. <laughs> Most helpful backstage in a one act, Shannon Milne. <laughs> Most dedicated performer, Colin Boomhauer. Best Theater Festival MC, Penelope, Penelope Noza. <laughs> this person told me they couldn't come. Most helpful backstage in a one act, Jacob Cattell. <laughs> I think he's very enthusiastic about that. Best Spotlight Technician in a Musical, Simone Park. Best rehearsal support in a musical, Aaliyah Sanders. I have like a whole other award ceremony that's going to need to happen. Most calm and on task, Emma Eli. Most hands on stage manager, Rachel Ledoux. 
I didn't see you. You crept in. But you're here, yay. Um, most ready to jump in where needed, Ace Taylor. Best costumer, Elizabeth Kusman. Most ready to help, Michael Johnson. Most giggly cast member, Chloe Hargis. <laughs> Best team player, Leah Jamison. <laughs> Quickest memorizer, Gray Bruley. Best singer in a musical, Emma Gibson. <laughs> Best comic relief in a one act, Aries Young. <laughs> Best deadpan expression, Chloe Weinstein. <laughs> Is that, that except for so I uh, where did they go they're buried here I decided um, that I wanted to introduce something uh, I wanted to do my own award um, for the best all-around theater artist award and I wanted to do it um, class by class and so my idea is that it goes to one student from each class who exemplifies what it means to be a dedicated theater artist. This student will have good rehearsal habits, be on time, be prepared and ready to go, and have good communication skills. They'll work to build relationships with new members of the community and be open and inclusive to all. They'll challenge themselves to grow as an artist and seek new opportunities. So the best all-around theater artist freshman is Olivia Connor. Um, the best all-around theater artist sophomore is Leah Jamison. The best all-around theater artist junior is Gray Bruley. And the best all-around theater artist senior is Jessica Southwick. So all of these students really worked hard to extend themselves to newcomers, to be on time, to be ready, to check in, to communicate, to be professional. Um, and also express themselves as artists thoughtfully. And while there are many of you out there who do, I just think it's nice to highlight and feature um, a few above and beyonds. So, our next uh, piece that we want to do is actually a performance. So something else that we participate in every year is um, the Vermont Young Playwrights Festival where we do a reading of a selected play. So students write 10 minute plays and we submit them to the festival. And then they select um, one play that will be performed as a staged reading, one that's a cold reading, so people just read it from music stands, and uh, one that's an honorable mention. This year, our um, honorable mention was Emma Gibson's play. Our cold reading was Annalyn Blow, and our staged reading was Gray Bruley's. Um, and so in the past, when we've done different performances, one thing we've done sometimes is read one of the VYP plays. So um, I asked Gray if it would be okay to have some students read her play. Uh, I had to do a little bit of editing because <laughs> it is a little not family friendly in places, uh, even though it was performed at the festival. But I just thought, like, I don't know, 
I said, what was that? They said it was fine. I did a mildly cleaned up version. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, invite to the stage Gray Bruley, who will be reading the stage directions. Leah Jamison will be reading a part. Um, Nat Cronin and Aries Young. And I will let Gray introduce the show. I feel like what we might wanna do though for this is just move these a little further down stage so that um, everybody can hear you well because you will not have a mic. I think you're gonna wanna sit, yeah. I think Gray's gonna be over here. So my play, which I originally just wrote for Susan's creative writing class, and I never thought that anything would happen with it, is called Like Pulling Teeth. And our setting is a sleepy small town in a rural area. Our characters are Molly, a 10-year-old girl, often bossy to her younger brother Leo, and Leo, a 7-year-old boy full of imagination and often doesn't listen to Molly. Young siblings Leo and Molly are struggling to share a bed. Leo stirs restlessly. His arms are wrapped around a butterfly net as if it were a teddy bear. Leo, your legs are in my space. Move over, you have so much extra room. You're the one in my space. Besides, you have a better view of the trap from here. No, I don't. Scoot over, I'm suffocated. Molly begins trying to shove Leo over to make room for herself on the bed. Leo squeals, trying to slap her hand away before he realizes he is still holding the butterfly net. He then begins bonking her with it on the head, thus beginning a foolish looking battle between the two. Leo delivers one more whack for good measure before he places the butterfly net back down. Do you think this trap is going to work? Of course it is. Don't be stupid. You just need to wait. Sitting crookedly on the floor is a sad attempt at a shoebox trap, covered in glitter with a pile of sugar laid out as bait. They're planning to catch the tooth fairy. Don't say stupid. It's a bad word. You don't even know bad words, you little turd. Leo slaps his hand over Molly's mouth. A soft jingle is heard at the open window. A light blue glow enters cautiously. The siblings watch quietly. Leo tightens his grip on the butterfly net. Within the glow, a pair of silver wings can be seen. Molly holds her breath as she feels her baby tooth being taken from underneath her pillow. The glow then moves away from the bed. Almost as if on cue, the glow stops, moving toward the trap. The siblings sit rigid on the bed, afraid to move. The trap falls. <laughs> Leo and Molly leap from the bed, rushing to the aggressively shuffling box. Molly opens the lid to reveal a small fairy, attempting to remove her feet from the glue placed on the bottom of the trap. Leo feverishly flings his butterfly net over the little fairy. I can't believe that actually worked! Leo turns to Molly to celebrate their victory, to see her crouched down next to the fairy, a confused expression on her face. Alright, what are you little brats? What the hell is all this about? Molly looks up to Leo, bewildered. He crouches down beside her, examining the tooth fairy. She looks incredibly rough around the edges. She smells of cigarettes and something resembling a skunk stench. Her hair is a dingy yellow blonde with a texture of hay. She is wearing one false eyelash, the other is nowhere in sight. I think there's some mistake. We wanted to catch the tooth fairy. I am the tooth fairy, you snotty bastard. She suddenly tries to fluff herself up, smoothing her hair and frumpy dress. She bats her singular eyelash. Hey, you tell. <laughs> there must be a mistake. Listen, this is too fair. It's Bethel. The siblings share a look and begin to giggle at the silly sounding name. It's what? Did I stutter, you little snot stank? I thought you were supposed to be nice. Listen, Magnet, you do this for 300 years and still be in chipper. I'm a damn delight. She flashes a smile of yellow decaying teeth. <laughs> I thought the tooth fairy would have good teeth. And I thought you gross grease balls would have some damn respect. <laughs> She pulls a cigarette from her bra. It looks like it's meant for a Barbie doll. <laughs> How did we manage to even catch you? I thought it wouldn't work. I thought this sugar crap was something else. She slides a finger underneath her nose, doing a snorting gesture. Why are you the tooth fairy if you don't even like children? You think I chose this stupid job? No, moron. I was born into it. She begins padding along her dress, searching for something. Oh, you kids got a light up. Molly and Leo shake their heads, exchanging a disturbed glance. 
I know it's around here somewhere. She reaches into her rat's nest of a hairdo and extracts a Diet Coke bottle, three, three shoes, something that smells like it used to be alive, and finally, a lighter. She lights her cigarette and doesn't bother trying to blow the smoke away from the siblings. <sighs> what do you mean you were born into it? What do you think I mean? My mother was a woodland fairy and my father was a Christmas elf. <coughs> they were never supposed to be together, so no one knew what to do until I knocked some sorry stuff with front teeth out. I ended up having to pay that little boy two quarters. I think I should capitalize on that. <laughs> share a confused look as Bethel begins to cough very aggressively as if she needs to clear something from her throat. From her mouth, she produces a hairball of fiery red hair. She turns to the disgusted siblings. <coughs> well, it's not mine. It's Jerry. Who is <laughs> Jerry? The leprechaun. The low-life cheese. Bethel suddenly avoids eye contact, taking another drag from her cigarette, blowing the smoke towards the ground. She opens her mouth to say something, but decides against it, taking another drag instead. Well, I think it's special. Do you remember when you gave me a five dollar bill that I lost my front teeth at the same time, Bethel? Not really. It happens a lot, kid. Well, I remember it. Well, I don't. Listen, morons, I've been doing this a long time, and I do a damn good job. If you've got any issues with me, that's not my problem. I'm sorry it's not my dream job, but there's nothing wrong with the way I do things. Whatever, you're just a grumpy old fairy. Bethel shrugs her shoulders and picks something from between her teeth. <laughs> Come on, Leo, let's just let her go and go back to bed. It's late. Yeah, right, sounds like a great plan to me. Great meeting you, Mary. Really, just the highlight of my night. Totally didn't take me a whole damn hour behind my schedule. Molly rolls her eyes and helps Bethel unstick her feet from the glue placed at the bottom of the trap. Without saying another word, she turns around and climbs back into bed. Leo gives an awkward smile to the fairy and moves to follow before Bethel gestures for him to come closer. Listen, kid, you still got teeth to lose? Leo nods, wiggling a loose baby tooth for proof. Right, listen, you keep leaving them under your pillow, and I'll bring you some more five dollar bills, alright? Okay, Miss Bethel. Bethel nods. She pauses for a moment as if trying to decide what to say before she shakes her head and flies out of the window. Leo returns to bed, falling right asleep after the adventure. He wakes up the next morning to find a $10 bill and a cigarette underneath his pillow. <laughs>
that started high school with our remote A, B schedule and no fall musical. Uh, this is the class that decided to join theater when we were meeting in Taylor Park in a big circle. Do you remember that? We met those of you who came in Taylor Park in a big circle uh, and talked about doing Brothers Grimm or doing some play. We didn't know what to do. Um, this is the group that showed up to meet everyone wearing masks. And they still decided to do theater amidst all of that. So I think that's pretty remarkable. Uh, the first person that I would like to send off is Sophie Williams. So Sophie, you want to stand up? Um, so Sophie has been a calm, intelligent, and reliable presence in our sound department, managing all the mics back there from the sound booth, which is an incredibly challenging job during the musical when you have people coming in and out. Um, and has done that with a lot of ease and confidence, or at least appeared to have a lot of ease, um, and has a lot of confidence. Uh, but all, what I felt was Sophie's creativity and like depth of knowledge came out really enormously, to me at least this year, when she designed the sound for Little Women and came to me with all this incredibly researched material uh, and lots of ideas about when things should be played and how and um, so just was super impressed with that. So I just want to say, Sophie, you will be missed. Can I give you a hug? Uh, I have a little thing for you. So I have your graduation cord, but I also have for you to take with you um, a little drama pin. So there you go. Yeah. Jessica Southwick. So when I first started here, I kind of wanted my light, my light, so Jessica's been mainly doing light design, light board operation, but when I first started, a lot of the light board operators were not interested in designing. So I would say, like, what do you think this should look like? And they'd be like, just tell me. And Jess is kind of like, don't tell me. <laughs> so Jess just comes up with these really amazing creative ideas and again, just does it with this like calm confidence and I just always felt like I could totally trust when you were up there in the booth that, I, that you knew what you were gonna do um, and you were super clear. So I know that you're gonna be really successful in your next steps, but I want you to know that you're definitely gonna be missed here, so. Can I give you a hug? I have you a cord and a pin. Yeah, you're, you will be missed. Elizabeth Kusmit, Lisa. Lisa started her journey on the BFA stage in pigtails being flung around in Matilda. Um, not really being flung around, but it looked like she was. Um, and she's wrapping up her time here at BFA in an equally dramatic way, flinging around lots of costume pieces. So Lisa designed costumes for the musical and for Little Women, um, and I had never had a student fully take on costume design before for the musical, uh, but Lisa's color choice and aesthetic and clear vision were just phenomenal. So, as you can see, we're losing a lot of tech folks this year. Um, so, Lisa, you are definitely going to be missed. Let me give you a hug. Thank you. Rachel. I don't know how to say your last name. It's just inviting me. Rachel Ledoux. Um, so, Rachel first showed up in my online advisory and was already very clearly like, I need to get to BFA and do things, and uh, was so excited. As soon as Rachel learned that I was the theater person here, was like, oh, how do I do that? And you did show up at the park, I believe, for that circle at Brothers Grimm. Um, she stepped up and she co-directed the freshman junior jam, and she was constantly looking for new opportunities for leadership, and then jumped in this year to be our stage manager, um, and uh, very bravely 
stepped into that role, and that role is not an easy role for the musical. So that was much appreciated. Um, not afraid to take risks, not afraid to try new things. I know you're going to do amazing stuff, Rachel. We'll miss you. Brendan Connolly. So Brendan, I don't know if that was yet. Brendan was also in the freshman junior jam, right? And you were in that production that Rachel and I believe Penelope co-directed. Rachel fault that I ever did in the first place. Rachel lured Brendan in here, and then we just kept pulling him in, and he did She Kills Monsters with us in masks. Um, and then this year stepped into a larger role playing Lori in Little Women. Um, and then, you know, really just continued as well to like push and challenge yourself and stay open and, you know, you, you would constantly acknowledge when you didn't know what you were doing and say, I need help. And so I just really appreciated you were, you've always been ready to grow and very curious and really open and honest. And we are definitely going to miss you here, um, your talents and your open curiosity and your punctuality and attendance. <laughs> Penelope. Penelope Lindsay. So Penelope co-directed that infamous production that Brendan was in. And I actually saw Penelope like with amazing leadership and jumping in and asking questions. And I said, hey, are you interested in stage managing? And Penelope was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, you're doing it. <laughs> and <laughs> Penelope was uh, incredible as our stage manager for many years here and jumped right in and took on amazing leadership. So again, see these like tech wizards are leading us. Um, now I just learned that you have this amazing singing voice, I'm even more sad. But uh, I know that you will go on and do incredible things, and we are definitely going to miss you. There you go. Okay, so our graduating seniors, one more time. I want to acknowledge we have a few other folks, so uh, Max Weston, uh, Kira Gaudet, Aaliyah Sanders, Wesley um, Gilman, and Paxton Getty also were people who were all involved in the theater who are graduating, so we will also miss them. So, thank you. What was that? Aaliyah. Oh. <laughs> I just thought she was leaving. Um, so thank you all that this concludes our 2024 theater awards night. We have some very interesting cake. One of our traditions is the seniors cut the cake and I went to get the writing on the cake um, and I left them alone with it. And when I came back, I think they did it with chocolate sauce and it's all kind of bled. So it is, um, it is a beautiful artistic representation of congrats. BFA theater that probably tastes very lovely. Um, so I'm going to grab some juice and we have some cups and stuff out there. So I think we should gather around for the traditional, I don't know how you're going to all cut the cake, but we're going to, uh, I have it out there, but you want to do it here? I don't know. I think Mr. Bell would prefer that we do it out there. We're not supposed to have food in here. So thank you so much for coming out and let's have some cake.